This is the second year of the Open Hardware Summit. Um, in the first year, uh, we had a crowd of about 350 people. It all began when actually Peter asked me, hey, do you think there might be 50 or so people that we should get in a room and that can all talk about uh, you know, what we should do next, the issues we're having with open hardware, uh, you know, all the different things about manufacturing and business models and legalities. And I said, I think we can get 300, and we did. Um, and uh, within the last year, we wrote a definition um, of what open source hardware is. And then uh, CERN actually picked it up and turned it into a license, which was really exciting. We uh, created a logo, so we had a little competition. Um, and there was a logo that was kind of an homage to the OSI logo that was chosen. And so this year we're back again. And um, hopefully, uh, uh, you know, I think it's just getting bigger and, and better. We have about 450 attendees this year. We had to uh, do a breakout room um, for, for all the overflow. Yeah. And uh, I think in the, in the future, I think it's just going to keep growing, and I think there's going to be um, even bigger players that get involved. I think um, all the different tools that we use are going to start opening up as well, and so it's going to get bigger in the sense of what is accessible, and I think it's going to get bigger in the sense of who is using open source, and so um, bigger businesses and companies that you might not expect to see open source at. Um, and a lot of small companies. This year we had 300 uh, a $300 donation level for small companies that still want to show their support. And out of all our sponsors, almost 50% of them were the $300 donation level. So that tells me that there's a lot of small companies out there that don't have a lot, that are just starting out, that still want to be supportive and are growing and will, will eventually be um, big companies in open source hardware. Yeah. Thank you for being here. Um, we are the Arduino team, as we have been already introduced. Uh, so. This, in this presentation, we're just going to give you a, like a basic uh, introduction to what Arduino is, and, and but in a way, also uh, you know, typical information that people ask all the time: how many boards have been sold, and who uses Arduino. But then also, we have a fairly big section, which is about uh, lessons learned. They are sort of thrown in without any specific order, and we haven't really sort of in our very sort of specific tradition, we haven't really rehearsed anything. So it's going to be, you know, interesting. Uh, so I'm going to hand it over to uh, David for the, for the introduction to Arduino. So we try to put the community, the Arduino community in the center. This, this diagram, unfortunately, is not original for today. We cannot be like doing diagrams every day, but this was made when uh, Arduino actually collaborated in creating the first fab lab in Italy. So we, we made this diagram in order to be able of informing how the Arduino community works. So the community drives our innovation. We design something, or someone in the community designs something that uh, we generate some uh, reference designs. It's obviously manufactured by somebody and it's distributed all over the world and so on. These numbers are uh, not real in a way that they are all of them much bigger. So the, the Arduino team. Is, I mean, we, I'm glad to actually be honored to introduce our first female member in the Arduino team, which is Daniela Antonietti, who <laughs> came here today either. So, I mean, I, I know you're used to see the Arduino team as this. Uh, <laughs> this picture is actually quite old, but from now on, you have to add uh, Daniela to the mix. So here you see Daniela with uh, Gianluca, and Daniela, for, you, for those of you that don't know, has been working with Arduino since day one. She's been, uh, she's uh, actually working with Gianluca and being one of our manufacturers. So she's been running the operation in the back, like making sure that's always stock in the boards, making sure that things are sent to people in the distribution line properly and so on. That's why we chose her to be our CFO. Uh, the first thing uh, is to not make something you don't use yourself. Um, I think that that kind of speaks for itself. If you don't use it, nobody else is going to use it. Second of all, to know who you're making it for. A lot of times when we make technical things, we make them because they're cool or because it's an interesting technical hack. But if you can't picture the person who's going to use what you're making, it's never really going to get used as well. And so really try and know that. For me, it's always been about the students that, that I teach. And I'm, I'm very proud how many of them are here speaking and things like that. Um, it's, it's important to know those people. Also, know what you want out of it because Nobody is more important in that sense. You're the one who you're making it for to start with. And if you don't know what you want and don't know what you want after it, it starts to succeed, you're going to have trouble figuring out where to go with it. 
I say this one a lot, make projects, not platforms. Um, and then, of course, I've broken my own rule. Um, but if you have to make platforms, make pro platforms that are designed to make projects. Um, you know, with Arduino, what we've tried to focus on all the time is to, to think about what it's used for. And it does get used to make other tools, but we really like it when it's, it's, it's used to make things you use every day. Make your own projects, make your own art, make your own design. Um, this is one that I think as you become experts, you, you often overlook, that to respect the intelligence of the beginner. Quite often you think of beginners as, as dumb. They're not dumb, they just don't know what you know. And they're very intelligent, and so it's, it's worth considering that. Um, some of our best suggestions actually come from the beginners. Likewise, experts are not always the best advisors when you make tools for beginners. Uh, beginners are. Um, this is one that's been said many times, and I think it always bears repeating, that, that uh, Arduino is many different things, and uh, we feel that good hardware, good software, good explanation, and generous users all have to go together to make a really good project. Those are really the four pillars for us. Um, I know there are many of you in the room who heard me drill this into you many times. Um, but really, um, you know, the early projects uh, from Ivrea, from K3, from ITP that were online using Arduino really helped us push things forward. And the zillions that have come out since then, um, you know, how many of you learned from somebody else's work online? For the future of this conference, what we're really hoping to do is um, to, to instill, uh, like, open up and be completely transparent about everything that takes to run a conference, because neither myself or Aya are... Uh, event planners were both prototypers and um, so so it's been a whole learning experience for us and because we're in the open source world we want to share that with everybody and so so we're hoping to kind of instill in other people what it is to run a conference such as this and, and kind of put out a guide um, and we really definitely want to to uh, do it in other countries and other places Right now, it's just kind of a logistical issue of I live here and she kind of lives here, and so it's very convenient in that sense. Um, but we definitely want to um, make it happen somewhere else and, and maybe at another time so that other people who might be busy in September can, can come. And um, so, yeah, we just hope it gets bigger and better and okay. more people are well, doing it.